Well, I'm a member of the 12th Street Gang in Pomona. And, you know, I just hang around my friends, play football sometimes, walk around or you know, whatever is happening. In this town, there's three gangs, but only one's known as 12th Street. 12th Street, you know, goes back between the fathers before and the ones before that. Well, their sons now, they claim 12th Street because their fathers were from it or they grew up in it. I've been in jail a long time ago, you know, when I was about 13, 14, you know. But after that, you know, I'd, I'd stopped staying out of trouble in that. Tony's an old sharky. He knows about gangs. He knows what, what we're going through. He knows what it was before, you know, it was worse or probably. I'm really the gang worker. I work with Tommy. Knowing most of his problems at home, his pure group pressure, his girlfriend who plays a heavily influence on him. He's thinking about quitting school. I put him here working as an artist. He's a good kid. He's easily influenced, like most kids are at a young age like that. They're influenced by older guys who they have respect for because of the things that they have done. How come you and Dan? I'm really close to Tommy. He's not like my all my other brothers. <laughs> He's not really a troublemaker. Twelve. Twelve. He's. The brothers I can count on a lot. Today, my brother Ernie came home from Camp Kilpatrick because he did his five months there. And, you know, he came home to, and all his friends are here celebrating. How'd you like it over there? Eh? Gonna go back, huh? Nah. Show him your, your cross. <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons why my brother Ernie got put in camp was, you know, he didn't want to listen to my mom or dad or anything. He kept getting in trouble and that. Didn't want to come home or just keep missing school and that. So, you know, they had to put away for a while. We didn't want to put Ernie away. It's just that the court wanted it. I wanted to bring him home, you know, the court to give him another chance. But the judge told me that, no, he had been in too much trouble already. So, I mean, that was a court decision. <laughs> ah, He's a boxer. <laughs> hey. oh, Being a kind of um, raza de uh, the Mexican family, usually the father is the head honcho. The mother is the one who babies everybody. And I mean, even if the son's wrong against the father, the mother backs him up. Uh, but that's a closely knit family right there. You can't go. You're sick. Huh? What's wrong? <laughs> we are a close family. I guess our culture has us together. You know, we're always together. No matter what they do or, you know, they're my children. I still love them. Six <laughs> Uh, Tommy, we've tried to keep him home more. He is still at the stage where we can keep him home. And he hasn't, he hasn't really wanted to hang around with the, the barrio over there, the guys. He'd rather stay home, do some drawings, or, you know, mess around with a car out there. <laughs> If you hang around with your friends, you know, you get in a lot of trouble sometimes. So what they do is their business. I'm trying to be myself, not them. What they do out on the streets, I, I don't know. You see, because they're very respectful here at home, respectful, you know. They're not a loud mouth or nothing with us. We tell them to do something, they'll do it. But when they take out from here, from the house, you know, they go around the corner, man. They, <laughs> you know, they grow wings and all that. Yeah. 
on it. It's a good family. You know, the boys, uh, you know, they, they get, they just have to do this traditional thing that normally to them or to any other 16, 17 year old kid isn't wrong. You're not wrong till you get caught. Look, I, I, I think the reason why they act so cool, um, they act so mean to show people that, like, don't touch me or I'll kill you. And being that they get so violent at a certain time or place, is to show that they are mean. I mean, most of them, they're not. If you get Tommy by himself, or you get any other young kid like that by himself, and you talk to him, I mean, you, you can relate to him as a person. He has the same feelings you have. But with that pure group pressure, with his gang members, his security, and his girlfriend, all these different things hitting him, make him, uh, you know, make him think funny. They just don't think right till they get to a certain age. Those guys that hang out in the neighborhood, you know, 27 and that, the veteranos, they're still gangbanging that, working. They got wives and children. They go in and out of prison in the county and that once in a while, do a couple of years, get into blows in there with other um, cities, you know, other neighborhoods around. But we get in because they come down here and they shoot up the houses, man. You know, they don't care who they hit over You go here, over man. there, their dads and moms will be jumping you know? on you and chill. Yeah, man, but what if they hit one of the kids inside well, the house? Well, you know, if we're around where something's happening with the another neighborhood, like Cherryville or Chino, and they found out where we lived, they'll come over and, you know, shoot our house up or break the windows out, and somebody probably end up getting shot in the house. Well, the guys from the other water came and shot my house down because they said somebody, they think my boy was the ones that went and shot their house. And uh, they just came over here once and they shot in the morning, about 5 o'clock in the morning. I was asleep and I heard uh, two shots. I got up and uh, I looked outside, looked at the cars and the house, and I didn't see nothing. Then later on, Tommy goes outside and says, Dad, come out here and see where the bullets hit. And they hit on the sidewalk and went on the grass. So I said, well, somebody shot at the house. Well, when they shot at our house, you know, I was in, I was in the front, in one of the front rooms. I was sleeping right by the window. And all of a sudden, you hear these shots. Blah, blah, blah. Big old loud one, sound like a cannon. Just jumped on the floor, ran the hallway, and then seen a bullet hole right through the door. My sister's room, you know. It's kind of scared. Well, it was about 4 o'clock in the morning. And they, I guess they just came around through the street here. And, um, well, they shot. They shot about five or six times. And it, one came through the, bo uh, the room, which it almost hit my sister in the head because her bed was right here and mine was over there by the wall. And so right away she told me to get down. So I jumped off of the bed and she was still here. They shot again, and we just both got off, got off of the bed, and we crawled out. And it came through the window, it went through the door, and it went right through the hall cabinet, almost into my mother's room. Well, everybody was scared, and in a couple of days, they just kept waiting for them to come again, but they didn't come. Tommy wanted to stop. I don't think Tommy wants to be like the brothers. Right. A little more back. For one thing, he just wants to have right. a car, you know, and be out there riding around and all that. Well, I just want my kids to grow up to be good workers and get married and have their own family, you know. Bring up their kids to be like, well, like they are, you know. I always worked. Since I was 14 years old, I've been working. Every day, ever since, 
And I tell my kids, how come you guys can't be like me? You know, work, come home, and have a couple of beers, and go to sleep. Go to work the next day. Stay out of trouble. That's all I tell them I want out of them, you know. Get a good job and stay on it. My mom and dad will probably want me to, you know, graduate, get a good job, try to settle down. That's what I'm probably end up doing. Stay away from trouble, stay around the house, you know, just to keep away from that jail.